In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Thrunite T1, and I'm going to tell you why you should or shouldn't buy it. Hey everyone, it's Wes Newman with The Pocket Perspective, where we do gear reviews on things like wallets, watches, knives, flashlights, and any other cool stuff you can put on your person or in your pocket. In this review, we're gonna cover the specs, the operation, design, followed by a quick summary, and then I'll finish up by telling you why you should or shouldn't buy the flashlight. So starting off with the specs, it is 2.7 inches long by one inch at the head by 0.86 at the tail. That's uh, 69.5 millimeters by 26.5 by 22 millimeters does have a Cree XHP 50 emitter. This one's in neutral. It comes in both neutral and cool white. Uh, so it's got a fairly shallow reflector that's uh, lightly orange peeled. Uh, the lumens are 1500 on turbo. It steps down to a 408 lumen. So it's three minutes and then it steps down to, and then it's 52 minutes. The strobe is 550 lumens at 120 minutes. The, and then it, it's got a high to a low that's uh, infinitely variable. And so it's infinitely stepped. Uh, the high is 685 lumens at 65 minutes. And the low is 15 lumens at 35 hours. It also has a firefly mode, which is a half a lumen that lasts for 12 days. It takes an 18350 battery. So I'll pop that out, which is supplied by through night. It's 1100 milliamps. And again, it's lithium ion, so the voltage is 2.7 to 4.2 volts. It is uh, aluminum. Uh, and then the weight is reported at 2.52 ounces. So we'll measure it here real quick. And it's 2.47 on my scale. It's uh, 70 grams and it's reported at 71.5 with the battery, so we're a little under. It's a standard IPX8 uh, waterproofing, two meters for 30 minutes, uh, 1.5 meter impact resistance. The beam distance is reported to be 335 feet or 102 meters, uh, which, it, which is a little short compared to some of the other flashlights and that's due to this shallow reflector. It's a very floody light, which I, which I do like. I think it's great for EDC. The beam intensity is 2,600 candelas and it's made in China. And then the price, uh, depending on the finish, goes from 35 to 45. The black is 35. The desert tan that I have, and then the forest green, I, I believe are $45 uh, from the manufacturer. So if we look at it and compare it next to the Olight uh, S1R2, you can see it's a little bit taller and the diameter is a little bit bigger. Now they're different, uh, batteries. The Olight is a 16340 and the Through Night is an 18350. But I think they're very comparable uh, in operation, uh, even in lumen output. You know, the Olight's supposed to be a thousand lumens. Uh, so they're very, very similar. This has a magnetic tail cap. They both have reversible pocket clips. So I think they're uh, good to compare uh, against one another. So again, hold them next to one another see that okay it does come with the standard accessories so if we look in the box here it comes with uh, the, the pocket clip it comes with spare o-rings uh, lanyard the battery a USB charging cable and then it also comes with a spare uh, rubber cap for the recharging port so that's something I didn't mention this is got a recharging port built directly into the light itself this is a, a micro port. It'd be nice if this was USB-C, but I believe the two T's have already converted to USB-C. I'm ready for all of these fl flashlight manufacturers to go to USB-C fully. Okay, so let's talk about the operation now. Uh, this is very similar to the Olight interface. It's very simple and intuitive. In fact, I like it a lot. So it's a single click on, and then you hold the button down to ramp up or down, depending on where it left off, it will flash when it's at the bottom and flash when it's at the top and continue to cycle. 
It's a single click to go off, and then a double click to take you into turbo, and then a triple click to take you into strobe. And to get to uh, moonlight mode, it's uh, a simple, hold it down for one second, and moonlight will engage. And then to do a uh, lock or unlock, while it's in moonlight mode, you hold it down for three seconds, and there you can see now it's locked. And then to unlock it, you just hold it down again for three seconds and then you're back in moonlight mode and normal function returns. This does have uh, a LED in the button and it will show blue uh, when it's on, when it's charged from 20 to 100%. It'll show red when it's from 10 to 20% and it will flash red when it's about to die at one to 10. Now, I think that those should probably be spread out a little bit more, you know, 20 to 100%, maybe 60 to 100, and then, you know, do the 20 to 60, and then uh, one to 20 or something like that. But I think they're they're just a little too far apart, in my opinion, on the, on the blue one. When it is recharging, it will be red, uh, and then when it's fully charged, it will be blue, and it'll be purple when there's a charging issue. Let's talk about the, the design and the build quality. Again, this is a 18350 rechargeable flashlight. Uh, it's aluminum. They did a great job on the machining. It has the, the reversible pocket clip that's pretty standard now, you know, for putting on your hat brim. It is bezeled down in the pocket. The clip, uh, you do have to uh, pull it out when you put it into your pocket. I can't get this just to slide directly into my pocket, uh, somewhat due to the, you know, it's not ramped up. And then, the, you know, you can see there it's, so your pocket basically wants to run into the front of it or run over to the top. It does rotate, okay? So uh, if you're looking to index this, uh, you know, it could move around in your pocket a little bit. It, again, it does have the Cree XHP 50. I don't think this is the 50.2. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description about Cree's and this uh, emitter style, I think that's uh, extreme high performance is what it stands for. Those are typically used like in a lot of street lighting and overhead lighting, things like that. They use massive arrays. That's what this emitter is used for. It is a, a, a five by five millimeter emitter. And this one is in neutral. So with many of the other XHP 50s uh, that are neutral, they are a bit greenish at the lower settings, and then they look a little bit better at the higher settings. This one, I'm not sure if you can pick it up on my camera. It is a bit uh, green, and then it kind of goes to a little bit of a purplish tint. So this is not a high CRI light. Here I've got a color checker. You can see what it looks like. Kind of blows the colors out a little bit compared to a Nichia which does a little bit better job of rendering this color checker. This does have excellent machining as well. So if I take this off and look at the threads, it's got nice square threads, very well machined. Looking down inside, you can see the spring. Here is the driver. It does have a magnetic tail cap. I don't believe you can pull out the magnet. You might be able to pull the spring out and get the magnet out. I know some people like magnets, some people don't. I personally like them, I find them useful. Uh, some people don't like them because they stick to their keychains and other things they put in their pocket. But I think if you compartmentalize your pockets, you know, it's not really a huge issue. One other little nitpick is the anodization does not match on the body and the head here. This is supposed to be a desert tan and this is definitely on the bronze side of anodization. So one other little thing that I found in use is the button is directly across from the USB charging port. And when you pull it out of the pocket, the rubber feels very similar. And so a lot of times I would actually push the charging port and nothing would happen. I wish that the button had some sort of a pattern or little nubs on there so that I could feel them with my thumb when I pulled it out of my pocket. So I do like the interface a lot. I think that the infinite ramping is really nice. Uh, you know, it's very similar to the Yolite in its usage, its form factor. Uh, the runtime is a little bit better and it's got a bump in lumens, uh, but you're gonna sacrifice a little bit of weight and size for that. So speaking of battery capacity, 
I did check the battery capacity and it was right on, right at 1100 milliamps. Here you can see a picture. Let's go ahead and test the lumens now. I'm using what's called an integrating tube, which is similar to an integrating sphere, except for way cheaper and not nearly as accurate. This was made by Texas Ace from Budget Life Forums. I'll put a link in the description below uh, that about these integrating tubes has been calibrated uh, to a known light source, essentially uses a lux meter and some diffusion film, and that essentially gets converted to, to lumens. So I'm gonna test the T1 on turbo first, which should be 1500 from the manufacturer, and then I'm gonna test it on high, which is 685 from the manufacturer. So here's turbo, and there you can see we're uh, 1330. So not quite 1500. The 1500 was most likely from the cool white emitter. This isn't terrible, uh, 1330. So the next I'm going to ramp this up till it gets to the top. There we go, and then put it back in. And you can see we're at 592 on the high setting and we should be at 685. So again, uh, not not too terrible uh, considering this is the neutral tent and I'm sure they uh, picked the brightest uh, one they could and went with those specs. And I thought we might go ahead and just compare it to the, to the Olight uh, S1R2 as well. So again, same thing, put it on turbo. And you can see this one's 1160 or so. And this is reported to have a thousand lumens. So uh, they were underestimating this. And again, this is the neutral tint uh, S1R uh, as well. So yeah, that's a little bit about lumens. Uh, I thought it would be good to uh, start comparing lights. Again, this isn't uh, you know super uh, accurate. I think it's you know ballparkish but it should be good for comparative purposes as we move forward and do additional light reviews. You know, I'll keep these in a spreadsheet and I'll put a link to the spreadsheet below and we can look and we compare, you know, using the same setup and just see, you know, which lights are brighter and, you know, we should be able to check manufacturer specs within reason. So, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's the lumen test. So in summary, I think overall, this is a really great light, fantastic for EDC, super bright, small pocketable you know a couple little gripes would be the emitter tint uh, the anodization doesn't quite match love to see usb-c uh, maybe a little bit of traction on the button so i could find it a little bit easier but all those things are livable and i'll continue to use the light i think it's great and i've really enjoyed reviewing it so why you should or shouldn't buy the light? You should buy the light if you want a pocketable, bright, rechargeable light. You should buy the light if you're looking for something floody. You should buy the light if you want something with a nice, intuitive interface. You should buy the light if you're looking for something affordable. Why you shouldn't buy the light? You shouldn't buy the light if you don't like magnetic tail caps. You shouldn't buy the light if you're looking for something with a perfect tint, or you might at least want to look at the cool white one. You shouldn't buy the light if you want perfect anodization, or maybe look at getting the black one. Those typically match more often than uh, the other colors. And you shouldn't buy the light if you're looking for something with a lot of throw. Again, this is a floody light. But overall, I think it's been fantastic and I would highly recommend the Through Night T1. So what about you? Do you have a Through Night T1? If so, let me know down in the comments if you like it. And if you don't have one, let me know what you think about the 18350 form factor. That's all I have for you in this video. If you enjoyed this type of content and you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing. Thanks and have a great day.